Hello, my name is Christopher Graham, and I have something very important that I want to share with you, and I believe it's the most important video that I could ever make. And I believe I've been led to make this, so I pray that if, if this is for you, that you would take heed, and uh, even if, you, if, it's not, if you're not ready at this moment, go back and consider it later, because this is, I believe this is for you, possibly. And the title of it is, Why We Need a Savior. Well, and I'm going to be looking at my notes here. So I wrote, kind of wrote some notes out beforehand so you'll see me looking here. I hope you excuse me for that. But I didn't want to forget anything. So I want to, and so somebody's going to look at my notes and someone's going to be just kind of impromptu. And the topic is, Why We Need a Savior. Now, first of all, now, what makes Christians say that Jesus and Christianity is the way to go in over any other religion or belief? All one has to do is look around the world and see that it's messed up and getting worse. What is the solution? The various religions and philosophies have their various answers. Philosophy says that if we think enough and just look at things in a certain way, that's enough. Religion says that if we do enough of a good thing, that's enough. Religion says that, you know, it, that's man's efforts to reach God. Christianity is God's efforts to reach man. With religion, you just never know if you've done enough. With Christianity, you know that God has done more than enough. So the question is, why do we need a Savior? The scriptures tell us that there is none righteous, no, not one. That's Romans chapter 3, verses 10 and 12. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Now you may ask, now what sins or how many is enough to make you be unrighteous? James chapter 2, verse 10 says, For whosoever shall keep the whole of the law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. Remember Adam and Eve? So if it takes only takes one sin, what hope does anyone have? None. Here's the good news. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, through our Lord. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For by the grace of God are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God and not of works, lest any man should boast. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. All of our righteousness is as filthy rags. That's Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. Now the question was asked of Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. That's Acts chapter 16, verse 30 to 31. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Jesus said of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's John chapter 14, verse 6. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew, and hang on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. We are the witness of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. That's Acts chapter 5, verses 30 through 32. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely oh, for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. 
But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we should be saved from wrath through him. Romans chapter 5 verses 6 through 9. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, so death passed on to all men, for uh, that all have sinned. Romans chapter 5 verse 12. For by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Romans chapter 5 verse 19. And almost all things are by the law, prayers with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, need to buy the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. Okay. So, I wanted to read it from scriptures, and I'm, and I'm going by the King James Version. That's the version that I use for memorization and for, and for my uh, study and getting close to the Lord. So, now, so what I want to, let me get, now I want to get more personal with you. You know, and you can see this here. I, I have this, this, as you can see. You know, it's not necessary to go hell. That's a choice that everyone makes one way or another. Um, you can make a choice to not go to hell. You can make a choice to go or not to go. Okay, and you can't hold anybody else responsible for your decision. That's something that everyone has to make on themselves. And you see, like it's saying that, um, you know, like it says what I just read here is that, you know, if, if you believe, you come from under condemnation. Uh, if you choose not to believe, then you you remain condemned. See, everybody was born under sin, so people think that you have to commit a sin to go to hell, or smoke, drink, or whatever it is, wear pants, or whatever the people think of as a sin. People think you have to commit a sin to go to hell. But no, what it is, by default, everybody is a sinner by, de by default, and everybody deserves hell. And, and unless you make a decision to accept Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior, then everybody's default destination is hell, you have to make the decision to get off of that path and humbly uh, come to the Lord and and accept his forgiveness to what he's done. So that applies, that forgiveness, when the Lord Jesus died and was resurrected on the third day, that applied to everyone. Now, just because he died doesn't mean that everybody's going to automatically go to heaven. You have to actively uh, except believe it, not just know it, not just a mental head knowledge of knowing that, because the devils, they know what, they know the truth. A lot of people know the truth, but you have to, you have to come to a point where you know for yourself between you and the Lord what's your standing. And if you're not sure, if you don't know what your relationship is, then you need to, you need to get it in this, I've given you some scripture, but you need to read this for yourself and ask them, you know, if you're an atheist, Lord, did, did they, did they, uh, are you really out there, God? Do you really exist? Did you really do all that? Uh, it, uh, if you're a Muslim or whoever you are, you know, what's, if someone says, you know, what's the truth that, that they're saying about Jesus? I believe one way about Jesus. If you're a Jew or whoever you are, if you're sincere, you come to the Lord humbly in truth and in spirit seeking the Lord he will not forsake you he will I, I, I don't know how what timing how he will do it with you know different people have different testimonies of how they were saved and someday I'm going to get back to that and share for myself but the 
question is, you have to do this for you and just be open to however the Lord is going to uh, interact with you. But he is true to his word. He doesn't want to see uh, anyone lost. And if you're at that point, you're saying, hey, I'm, I can't do this on my own. I've tried everything. I've tried all these pleasures in the world, money, uh, money, cars, physical pleasure, drugs, um, whatever it is that you may have used to try to fill that void. If you're at that point, you say, okay, I'm at the end of myself. I, I've done everything I can do. I, I just can't feel that. I can't save myself. I can't, I've tried to, or I've tried to be right. I've tried to be good. Then you uh, take that to the Lord from your heart. And, and I have just a, a prayer here. I'm just going to read this that if, if you mean, if you're at the point where you, the Lord is speaking to you and you, you ready from your heart to do this. This just says, you know, what to pray just to help you if you wish. Dear God, I am a sinner and need forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ shed his precious blood and died for my sin. I am willing to turn from my from sin. I now invite Christ to come into my heart and as my personal savior. Okay, so so if you're ready to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. Okay, and, and let me go back and look at one more thing I want to mention. And it's not so much that you have to quit sinning, but you have to be willing to turn away from sin and say, Lord, you're right about sin. You are a holy, righteous God. I'm a sinner and I can't save myself. I need, I need saving. Like I said, Buddha can't do that for you. Confucius can't do that for you. Allah, um, uh, if you're a Luciferian or Satanist, a uh, New Age, um, whatever it is, if I may not mention, but whatever you are, um, Jehovah's Witness, uh, and Jehovah is well, is a name of God. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but uh, in that sense, you are. I do agree with you that Jehovah in this in this here in the word here. That's one of the names of God. Um, but anyway, let me not get off point too much. The whole point I want you to know is that I can say that going back to January 2006, I will say that's when, you know, I can say that the Lord intervened in my heart and uh, saved me and I'm for absolutely 100% positive of, of if this were to be my last breath I know that my next experience would be in the presence of the Lord and that's what you want you don't, don't want to be questioned all we got to do is look at what's going on in the world it, uh, you all know I, I don't have to say it specifically but with the you know the thing that you got to do to be able to get into places and uh, pretty soon buy and sell and uh, in Revelations, it talks about these times here. And I'm going to get into that in another video. But I'll just say, especially the book of Revelation, chapter 13, 14, talks about a specific something you have to have to be able to buy and sell that no one will, can do that unless they have this thing. That's for another video. But I'm not going to prolong it, so... Um, I'll post a link to an email where you can reach me if you if you feel like it. If, um, and like I said, I have some other. This is going on YouTube, and I may have it posted on some other places too. And I'll have a an email link if you wish to contact me. Um, and I will. I would certainly. I, I could. I would pray for you. And if there's any other way I could possibly help you within my power I would certainly be glad to do so so I if you have watched this I thank you for your time and I, I and uh, I pray for all the viewers and listeners and I thank you for your time and, and you have a blessed day